the technique of questioning of a teacher is very important to help the student in the process of learning. A good questioning technique actually can significantly enhance student understanding and mastery of certain topic or a certain concept. So usually, I think a good question sh we should ask the student how the things happen, how the things can be like this, how are we going to solve the problems. Then after that, most importantly, we have to ask them again why this thing happened, why it can be like this, and why we have to use this method to solve the problem. So we have to wait for the student to give response. So if they cannot give, we ask more questions again to trigger their thinking. So from there, they are actually thinking and that process is important for them to really understand certain things. If we directly give them the answer, usually what the student do is they will memorize. With the memorizing, their understanding might not be that strong. So that's why good technique of questioning is very important in the class lesson. In the previous lesson, we already learned about different kinds of events under probability. So, mainly we normal events and usually explosive events. So, I believe that you already know the difference between them. So, can you please tell me what is the main difference between normal and mutually explosive events? Normal, you can see the intersection, right? Yes. Mutually explosive? No, no intersection. So, we, that is the main difference between them. So, today, I'm going to show you one of the events here and then can you please tell me what kind of event is this? Yes, stay life means the probability for you to obtain any outcome here will be the same. 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 So there are how many outcome here? Six. six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So since we have fake dice, we also have unfair dice. dice. So do you know do you have any idea what's the meaning of unfair dice? The probability for getting certain number might be different. Right, so when you read the question, you have to be careful with it. So today we look at the fade dice. So let please tell me, when you look at the things, fade dice, is this a normal event or mutually exclusive event? How do you know it's mutually exclusive? What do you mean by no in between? So you will either get one or two. Or you, you either get 5, or 6, or 3, or 4, correct? Yeah. Can you, you get 3 and 4 at the same time? No. No, right? So this is a case that we do not have any intersection between, yes. We call it mutually exclusive. So still remember what's the difference between dependent and independent event? Yes. Can you give me some idea how to differentiate them? Dependent, like, it's the first one. To continue the second one. Yeah. But independent event also you got the first, you got the first one, you got the second one. But what is the main difference between them? Yes, the third. We replace them and without replacement. So which one are we not replacement? Dependent. Dependent event. So which means from here you must understand dependent event means every 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 time the total will be reduced by one. one. So which means the outcome for the next trial, it will be affected by the first trial. Yeah. For example, students. If I pick one student, put up already one student, yeah. right? Yes. This one will dependent event. But independent event is at the time, correct? Imagine that if I throw, I get a number, do you think the number will disappear? No. no. So this is what we say, without a weak replacement. The number always there. The total always the same. The probability will never change. Correct? So let us look at this one first. We start with something easy first. Time. For example, the dice. I throw one time. If I throw one time, so can you please tell me what is the probability for me to get number six? One of six. So this one is something very simple. What about if I want a probability for me to choose and for me to get either number six or number five? Two over six. six. Because they have two possible outcomes. Yeah. Right? Two over six. So which means you can actually round off pick up and see pick up become one over six. Right. What about 
probability for you to get an even number? Mm -hmm. Why 3 over 6? 3 over 6. 3 over 6. Which is? 2 over 6. 3 over 6. So you can think of 1 over 2. Okay. What about if I want to get a probability 2 or even number? Eight. How come they are different? Two is repeated. Two is repeated in this case, correct? So even number we have two or six. Since they are repeated, we have to view it as one outcome. So one, two, three. Two or six. One over three. One over three. One over three. One over three. So this one is something very simple because we only find the probability when you only want to get one knock card which is throw one time. So the thing will become complicated when we throw two times. Okay, let us see what happens if we throw two times. So if you want to throw two times, then you then you have to consider, you have to imagine the situation that you throw the die for the first time, you will get one knock card, right? After that, you throw again for the second time, you get another outcome. So this one, it will, it will get more than one outcome, remember that. So when you get more than one outcome, then you have to consider whether the second outcome will affect the first outcome or not. No. In this case? No. No. So we name it as independent, independent event. So from here you can see the difference between the mutually and the normal event. Why? Because the, no the total never reduces. And you can see these two, these two probability they are having the same value. Right. Okay, what happens if I want the probability of getting one number six in one number five? Oh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we have to consider the first and the second also, right? So now here I write it properly. So this one is the first. This one is the second. second. Okay. What is the first number you want to get? Six. Six. So the second number? Five. five. So please tell me the probability of six. One six. Five. One six. Six. Five. Correct. Yes. So I understand. Yes. Are you sure? Are you sure they are the same? Can you find all six? Yes. There are some difference between same number and different number. What? What is the difference? What do you mean? Which one? Yes, you got two possible cases here. Look probably. Maybe the first time you will get the number six. Or maybe the first time you will get the so you have to consider in this case. So in this case it's all or n? Or five, six. But when it comes to the same number, you imagine if you if you if you exchange the place, so it doesn't make any difference, right? So that's why this one is only for one case. But this one we got two possible cases. Tell me the probability. Times one over six. If all plus plus, what is the answer? One over two over thirty six. Two over thirty six, which is one over eighty. One over eighty. Okay, class. Before you proceed, I want to ask you: If you look at this one over thirty six and one over eighty, which one is which one is more difficult to get? Which outcome is more difficult to get? One over thirty six. Right, so you know this one means? Out of the 36 times you try, you only have, you only get success one time, which is two times number six again. But if you want to get number five and number six, it will be easier to do. Because you've got two possible cases you can accept. Right.